hi guys so today i'm coming to you with the first episode of a new series i'm doing here on my channel this is the kind of series that i've been wanting to do for absolutely ages and i've just never felt ready to do it i've just never felt like i knew enough about the subjects i was talking wanted to talk about and today i'm finally starting it um just a quick disclaimer this first um episode is not the one i wanted to start with um i will probably be posting that one next but that episode in particular is going to take a lot of editing so I wanted to start off with a slightly easier one just to show you guys what this kind of series is going to be about and yeah so this series is going to be um, a series where I cover a lot of interesting intriguing terrifying cases um, this first one is more of a intriguing but very very sad case that um, I learned about and just thought was absolutely devastating it's so sad and it's it's one that i think is really interesting and i hope you guys enjoy this video i hope you guys find it interesting um definitely stay tuned if you like these kinds of videos make sure you subscribe so that you can be obviously aware of when the next one comes out because the next case i'm doing is quite a well-known one but i found a lot a lot of information and stuff that i have not seen discussed on youtube before so I'm super excited to be filming and editing and sharing this video with you guys because it's like my favourite case of all time and I can't wait for that video to come up but anyway I hope you guys enjoy this one. This case as I said it is very very sad so just be aware of that before we get into it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Today we're going to be talking about the really sad case of O.C. Sneed. Um, I'm going to be saying Sneed, I know a lot of people pronounce it Sned. Some people pronounce it Sneed, I don't really know, but like, the way we pronounce things here in England, I would assume it's Sneed, but I could be wrong. O.C. was born in 1885. When O.C. was born to her mother, Caroline Sneed, she was instantly the victim of neglect. Her mother was not very caring towards her. She really always, she always displayed some level of hatred towards O.C. And people that knew the family said that her mother really didn't get on with O.C. and didn't like her and really did not treat her very well. Um, not much is known about the relationship in general, but it is known that they did not get on and her mum was very neglectful towards O.C. Even O.C. was also married at an extremely young age to her cousin Fletcher who was the son of her aunt Mary, who is her mother Caroline's sister. From what I've read, O.C. and Fletcher did get on quite well. She did, you know, it was an okay relationship. There was nothing disturbing or worrisome to do with their relationship. Um, it was more so her relationship with her family that caused all the problems. O.C. fell pregnant a few years later and when this happened, her mother and aunts found out that she was pregnant and they actually chased her cousin and husband Fletcher out of the country into Canada where he stayed after this. They told O.C. that Fletcher had died and she was under the impression that he was dead for the rest of her life. She never knew any different and she honestly just believed that he was dead. During her pregnancy, O.C.'s health deteriorated really, really quickly and she had a lot of visits from doctors who were really concerned about her welfare and the, you know, the level of care she was receiving from her mother and her aunts because they were like her main caregivers. Without her husband's support, she became ill very, very quickly and her family all but tried to starve her. She was very malnourished when the doctors came to visit her and they were extremely worried about her condition. One of the doctors that came to see her regularly actually described her as depressed, generally weak and extremely malnourished. The doctor ordered that a nurse be sent to take care of O.C. but after two days her mother actually kicked her out of the house and refused to have the nurse back in there to take care of O.C. The doctors then sent a $100 um, charge to O.C.'s family for the care that the nurse had given her and they actually refused to pay this charge and instead requested that the doctor accept $1,000 in O.C.'s will after she died which just outright blows my mind that they would say to this doctor that they wouldn't pay the charge to have the nurse come in and look after their daughter or you know the niece but that they would give him a thousand dollars out of her will once she died does that not ring alarm bells for anyone like no no okay so at this point the doctor threatened to take action against the family believing that there was something even worse going on than the mistreatment of this young woman 
but they actually were quite worried about what this family were going to do to her after this statement so he did threaten to take legal action against them. I don't believe he did in the end but it was threatened against the family. Another doctor apparently snuck food into the house. When he went to visit OC he was aware that they were starving her so he would bring food and hide it in her room for her to eat when the family weren't aware. OC gave birth to I believe a daughter and shortly after um, the daughter was born um, the child was given up for adoption but the family told OC that the child had died um, from an illness and she was unaware that her child was still alive. She believed that the daughter was dead and that's all that they, she ever knew. That's what they told her and that's what she believed. Again, similarly to believing her husband was dead, now she believed that her child was dead also. OC was at this point kept in her bed pretty much 24 hours a day. Her mother and aunts administered her with morphine to keep her drugged and sedated in her bed so that she wouldn't try and tell doctors what was going on and that they could just keep her easier. So in October 1909, OC was living with her aunt Virginia in a small apartment which was barely furnished. It had a table, a rug and two cots or beds and it had no heating and no hot water and there was no gas in this apartment either. I believe at this point OC was also still being kept in bed on morphine um, most of her time. Then on November 24, 1909, OC was administered by her family with a lethal injection so that they could attempt to collect $32,000 worth of insurance funds. OC was only 24 years old when she was killed by her family and she weighed just 80 pounds. She was extremely malnourished, suffering from a long-term chronic illness and from depression and it was clear that the state she'd been kept in was just despicable and was absolutely disgusting that she'd been living in this state for the majority of her life and her family had gotten away with it. It just blows my mind. I don't understand how that could happen but it did. So a few days later on the 29th of November the police were called to OC's apartment where Virginia showed the physician up to the upstairs bathroom. Um, they found OC in her bathtub dead with a pile of her clothes neatly stacked beside the bathtub. The police immediately thought that this was suspicious. They knew that OC was depressed but they didn't believe that she would have committed suicide um, and it just something didn't sit right with it so there was an investigation. So investigations probably would have started when the police realised that OC had been dead for 24 hours before her aunt claimed to have found her body in the bathtub, um, which obviously made them wonder if this aunt lived with her niece and the whole point was that OC was extremely ill at this point. Her aunt Virginia was meant to be her like main carer, so they were thinking like how on earth would this woman have not realised that her niece was dead in the bath if she lived with her and cared for her? She was in dead in the bathtub supposedly for 24 hours before Virginia even realised so this just didn't make sense to start with. And they also found that starvation was a clear big part of the reason that OC had died and this also didn't make much sense um, so that was investigated too. So the family were eventually found guilty and charged for all crimes held against them for OC's death. They had forged the suicide note, they'd placed her in the bath after giving her this lethal injection and they'd lied about the whole thing. Um, during the trial, OC's Aunt Virginia, the one that she had been living with and supposedly was her carer, actually starved herself to death before she could be sentenced for her crimes. Her mother Caroline pleaded guilty to um, manslaughter and she basically got a lesser sentence because she claimed to be mentally unstable, which was clear anyway, but we kind of used that to get a lesser sentence than her sisters did. She was sentenced to seven years in a New Jersey prison but she was then declared mentally unstable and sent to a hospital for the insane where she actually died. Um, it was later discovered that Caroline um, O.C.'s mother had poisoned her first husband I believe, one of her previous husbands, um, again for an insurance claim. OC's aunt Mary actually was not sentenced for her part in the murder. It's thought that she didn't have as much to do with it. She was aware of what was going on but she didn't really play a part in it. So she was cleared of charges on a technicality and sent to stay in Canada I believe. And this aunt Mary was actually never heard of again so nobody really knows what kind of happened to her but supposedly she moved to um, Canada to stay with her brother I think and yeah, no one ever heard from her. 
Osi was buried on December 7th, 1909, and that is kind of the end of her story. It's one of these stories that, like, normally when you have sort of murder cases like this discussed on YouTube, there's no clear end, you know, you either don't know who did it, you don't know why they did it, don't know what happened. All of this case is closed, we know exactly what happened, and it's so devastating to know that a mother and, you know, her aunts could do this to her just for the money, like, it just blows my mind that this could ever have happened. Um, there was actually a book called The Three Sisters in Black by Norman Zewald, I think, that was written about O.C.'s murder and the three sisters, um, O.C.'s aunt and aunts and mother's involvement in it. Um, I've not read it, but I'll try and leave a link to that in the description in case you want to learn more about this case. Kind of a quicker, shorter case that I wanted to discuss for this series, just to open the series and let you guys know what it's about. I think this is such a sad case and it just really shocks me that it's true. All of it happened and it's just so, so sad that O.C. had to go through this. She was so young, like her whole life was just misery. There's cases like this, it's really important to remember the people that went through these things and just acknowledge that these awful, awful things did happen to them. And yeah, I mean, no disrespect to O.C. or any of the other people that I will be mentioning in any of these videos. I just personally believe it's really important to remember these things that happened to them and to discuss it because if not you're just ignoring their whole story. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope it was interesting and make sure you subscribe as I said to see the next videos. Um, yeah, the next one I have planned is like my favourite case of all time and I'm so excited to share it with you. So I'm hoping that I'll be up soon so make sure you press the little bell icon to be notified when that video comes up and yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next one.